Welcome to another tutorial on Brizzy. This is the features series and in today's video we'll be looking at the global color styling. This is my fourth recording, the first three to blame on my adventurous cat that had trekked all over my keyboard and the fourth one for me for getting to unmute my microphone and recording a very nice and long video without any audio. So let's continue with our video today and talk about the global color styler. And I'm going to show you immediately what I'm talking about. You go here on the left, you see this little paintbrush, you hover over it, it says styling. And if you click on it, the first thing you will see is the color picker. And then under it, you will see all the fonts here. Now, of course, you know color pickers. We have that in every page builder and it is something that we are used to. But one of the things that I often see when I am looking at tutorials online is the following. Somebody wants to show us how they are going to change a heading. So for example, they have a heading and under that they have a subtitle and then they have some paragraph, la 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 la. Okay, and of course my spelling must be the World Cup soccer that's doing that. Okay, so I then go and I do my styling. And I change my subtitle. Let's change the subtitle. And of course, paragraph, I'm just going to leave like that. And this is what I often see when I see people doing tutorials online. Is they say, okay, you can apply any color here. You can choose here from your color pickers, right? Okay, and see, nice. Let's make it bold so you can see it better. Or you can, you know, paste in your own hex code over here, or you can freely change over here. This is what people usually do. And if that is how you are designing your website, I think you are causing far more work for yourself because the whole purpose of this little color palette over here is to speed up your workflow for you so that you don't have to go every time and say, Okay, what, what is the code here for this purple? Okay, it's this one. Let me copy that hex and let's go down to the subtitle here. Let's do the same paste. If you're doing that, really, you are wasting an incredible amount of time. And you should get used to using this color picker actually before you even start your website. So let's quickly do that. And then I'll show you what I'm talking about. I am going to keep the color palette as it is. This is the default Brizzy at the moment, and I'm going to load a block. So let's look, load a block with nice colors. Let's add a second block. Over here. Okay, let's just leave it like that. So if you click on anything with the blue, let's click on the numbers down here, you will see this little white frame around this swatch so we know that this is the blue that has been used and you have probably figured out by now that all these blues will correspond to this one but of course you don't want to keep this blue you want your website to be unique you don't want people to go to your website and says oh he used brizzy right you want it to be unique so what you can do is you can go to this color click on it and you can change it <gasps> and instant change look I'm going to just drag around here on the use slider and you can see how it affects all of those that have already been styled with the original blue. That is just amazing, right? Excellent. Now, this is what the purpose is of the color palette is that you can set up your color palette beforehand and you don't have to do this thing where you go in, copy every time and paste your hex coding or use a slider to change the colors. You just need to do it over here. And every time you want to change this, like this title, make it bold, want to change it, you can just choose it. And that is the whole, well, in a nutshell, that is the purpose of the global color styling. So two things I want to mention here, and that is, let's make it three things I want to mention. Let's delete the blocks. Remember, I have already changed this color swatch over here. If you go back into blocks and you look at your blocks, you will still see it is blue. 
You see those little icons and headings with the blue color, like the button. But if you're going to load it, it's going to be the pink color that you have set over here. So even though your blocks are still going to display the default Brizzy color, it's going to apply your setting. And that is also the same if you go into the dark. So for both light and both dark, you can keep that colors harmonious. Now let's go to the second thing I want to say. If you change this icon's color to another color picker, let's use this dark, dark, dark blue over here. And later on, you go and change the pink over here. Let's change it to green. That one over there is not going to be affected. And the reason for that is because that one is now assigned to a different color picker, this dark blue. If you then go and change the dark blue, let's change that then to something pink, you will see it affects everything that was originally in dark blue. And we can even see now that the title up here was in that dark blue. If you want this color to be linked again to these other icons, you need to go and click again on it. So once you click on a different one, it's going and you want to go back, you have to go choose it manually again, if I can use the word manually. Not only that, if you make any other change on the U slider here, even just slightly, you will disconnect it from the color picker completely. So I have made that change there. And if I now go again and change this, let's make it again very, you will see it will not do anything. That is the one thing you have to remember. Still on the second one, it does not affect your opacity. So if I decide that, let's make this, no, no, wait, let's take the radio here. Let's make it bold so we can see it very clearly. Let's just make it very, very big, hitting one. If on this radio, which is connected to the pink color swatch, I want to reduce the opacity over here, right? You can see I'm lightening it, not really lightening it. I'm just reducing the opacity. This is still connected to the swatch. You see, swatch is still connected. So even you reduce the opacity, the color will still be affected if you go in and you make changes to the global color style and it will remain the opacity. But one thing, and this brings us to number three, which you have to be very careful of. If you are going to play around with this, let's look at this one over here. Let's look at our, let's load another one so I can show you better. Let's use a dark one. And yeah, let's use the top one. Here we have this one. We have our picture in the background and the colors. Let's apply this one. This is the overlay color that has been applied to this image background. If I reduce the opacity, you can see that that is indeed the color that has been applied. So if I decide I want to also give it this pink, let's use this pink. Wow. I apply this pink and I reduce it. It will also affect any overlays. Let's see how that works. Go up here, click on the pink and I change it. And you see it will also apply to the overlays. So be weary of that because if you did do any overlay changes and use color pickers and you don't want that changed, you will need to go anywhere here and just slightly change it like this. So that when you now go and you make any changes, oh wait, let me use it. You will see it does not affect it now anymore. You just need to, if you want to unlink it from the global color palette, like I've just shown you. you, just need to, let's use another example that you can see how that works. Let's go to this image over here, very slightly, just move it. You can see the hex number change there. It still looks very, okay, what I'm showing you is very unprofessional, but I just want to show you if you do need to unlink it in that fashion, then you have to do it in that way. And everything else will change except that one now. And that is how you are going to be working with your color, color, global color style palette. Phew, these words are tongue twisters. And 
yeah, that's basically it for this video, but I'm going to continue. You don't have to keep watching because what I'm going to share with you will not affect anything on the global color styling from this point on. But I do want to just mention a few things about, you know, color themes and choosing a palette for your website, because I often see this on websites. It's just that the colors do not go together or people don't really know what to do with the colors on the website. Many people start building a website, they start doing text and they don't look at the original default colors and they don't choose a color palette for their own website from the very beginning. And later that gets them in trouble. They need to change colors. You have to hop around the website, different sections, different elements, change all the colors. Even in this case with Brizzy, you can choose all the global color stylings. It is good, I want to say color management um, style or practice, that you do need to choose a theme for your website before you actually start the website. I come from a graphic design background, so I'm not going to go to it in too much detail because then we're going to be talking for hours. But it is just something that I would like to advocate at this moment that you should make an effort before you do any design to think of what is the color theme that you are going to be using for your website. And if you don't have an idea, oh, the internet is full of ideas. You can just go online. You can Google so many things. Sorry, let me find the, the thing I was looking at yesterday. I found this at canva.com. 100 ideas for websites. And what they've done is they've actually taken photos and then they've selected colors from the photos that can go together. There's the hex codes there with them. And these are just, you know, out of the box, so usable with so many ideas. I can just look at this teal, turquoise, aqua, beautiful green. And I often tell people, don't reinvent the wheel, you know, just go and find online, get your ideas online, and then you adjust. You you don't have to copy 100%, but you really don't have to reinvent the wheel. For example, this one, I think perfect for a bridal or a baby photography website. That would be nice. Definitely something to do with eco cleaner production. And yes, so many ideas. And here we are looking at a hundred, right? A hundred ideas that you can go in and you can have ideas of what you are going to be using as a theme for your website colors. Another one that I also use often, which is actually, I don't even think focused on websites, is this one called Ideas to Try. And they have color inspiration, well, hair ideas, I'm not gonna go into that, recipes, styles, wedding ideas. And I will put the links uh, under the video, so if you're interested to go have a look. I go here to color inspiration. Unfortunately, there's not much of a search option here, but there are so many ideas here. And I can see some photos here, definitely from pixels.com or Pixabay, even Unsplash that they have already used. What they've done is similar to the previous website is that they take a photo and they get photo, uh, they get colors that go together. And I'm not going to go too much into color theory, but there are color rules. Look at this one. Oh, beautiful. I just love it. Click on it. Let's see it. You know, this alone complies to all the requirements for a good color theme on a website in that you have your shades, you have tints, you have your dark and you have a light. This is alone a perfect color scheme. With this one, I want to show you another little trick, and that is that you don't get the color codes. You don't get the hex codes when you look at this image. Now, in the old days, I used to download it. I used to open it in Adobe InDesign, and I would use Cooler, which is now Adobe Color, to determine you know, what are the colors or the ink dropper. But nowadays, this is made much easier. I use an extension from Google Chrome, and we go all the way up here to the right-hand corner. You see this little chart here with the color chart. It says color pick eyedropper, color pick eyedropper. And you can go uh, search that for the Google extensions. If I click on it, I activate it. And what it will do now, you will see I have a cursor here as I'm moving it. And that 
hair cross, when I hover over any color, it will show you that color in the little square under it. Nice, right? Even if you go here to the picture, even up here. Okay, I shouldn't give Rona B the extra. We're talking about Brizzy. <laughs> okay, so let me click. I haven't clicked yet. I'm just hovering over the image. The moment I click on the image, it's going to open a small little dialog box with the hex code inside already highlighted for you. So all you need to do is Control C, which is copy or Command C, and then your color is ready. So let's say I want to use this one up here. I click on it, then Control C. That's all I'm going to do. Going back to Brizzy now, and I'm going to go to my color picker, but I'm going to use the second one. Should I use the front? Okay. And I'm going to paste it. And you see, color is applied. And I can do that with all of them. Um, coming back, you don't click on the X because that will close the application. Then you have to open it again up here. Click again here, copy, go to the next color, paste it. Ah, oh, nice. Look at how I am building up my color theme over here now. So without clicking on it, what you do now is you click again and then you hover to the next one and click. And this is how you can be copying your colors back and forth, right? These, of course, are pre-made ideas. And for those of you interested in playing around more with colors, I'll give you three websites that I highly recommend. The first one, of course, is Adobe Color. And this used to be called Cooler or Cooler and Adobe Color at color.adobe.com. And here you can play around setting up your own color schemes for your website. And the most important thing that you'll have to probably look at is to change the color harmony over here. You have to decide, do you want to use complementary colors and um, so many other options and color rules if you want to have your shades or your tints, right? This is one. The other one, okay, go away. Why did I forget to do that? Is coolers.co. And coolers also have many options. Start the generator, it's free. And what will happen on coolers is that they will generate various colors for you and hit the space bar to generate the color schemes. Okay, right, so here you have a color scheme. Again, you know, you can get your codes over here at the bottom and I'm just going to press on my space bar and it will generate for me. Oh, I like this. You see immediately, this is perfect. And this is how quickly you can come up. Oh, nice one. I like this. This is very nice for flat color design. Excellent. The last one that I actually use a lot for websites when I'm in, you know, in a block mode where I cannot think anymore is this one from peloton.com. And the reason I use it is because it gives me tints and shades together with the color rules. Up here, uh, these are your settings for the color rules. At the moment, it's just one color. And if I click on, let's go for these ones over here. This is what you will traditionally get when you want to get various colors. Let's click on the one for four colors. Okay, very nice. And the reason why I like this is like I've just told you, I like it because there are darks and there are lights. And this is very important because if you just take, ooh, if you just take these four colors, the main colors that you see here, and you copy them, your website is not going to look good. And the reason for that is, let's see, where is my, some advice I want to give you. And this is very, 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 very basic advice, okay? Um, there are so many, a rule is, you know how the world goes, a rule is never a rule. When you want to choose some easy colors for your website design, choose a color theme before the time. Make sure you have a black or very, very dark variant. The reason why I say very dark is actually, if you go to Brizzy, the first color on their color palette isn't black. It's a very, very dark blue. And that is a styling option that is very popular nowadays that you can actually go into, let's go into the red. So now it is still dark, but it is now a very, very dark red variant. And it does give your website a different feel. If you want to go total into the black, you can move it there into the black. And there's nothing wrong with that. You will see on this side, there's 
the complete white and then complete black. So going back to that image I was just showing you, make sure you have black or a very dark variant. And then in most cases you need white. They must always be white. And again, going back to Brizzy, you will see here is the white with its hex code on this side. Next, then you choose two to three colors. I wouldn't really go into four or five, even though you can do that. And especially if it is part of the style of your website, you can do that. But I would stick around to just two colors, two different colors. And again, in the default Brizzy colors, you will basically only see the blue. You won't even see a third color like green or pink. It's just the blue. So make sure you have a dark. Make sure you have light. What do I mean by that? I'm not talking now about black and white. I'm talking now about tints or shadows or shades on your color. If you choose this dark black, make sure you have a light version of it as well. Right? And that is why I mentioned I like these guys from Peloton because they give me this color, they give me the dark and they give me the light. And it, you may be like, mm, okay, why do I need a light version as well? And of course, if you've been working long with website design, you know that if you want to have a dark image, you need light text over it, right? And actually you can see already here, it has applied my color styling that I've changed over here and it looks pretty nice, right? But this one, this, this blue here is just too dark. No, 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 no way. And that is why you need that lighter option. You need to be able to have a lighter version of that color. And then this is my personal preference. I always like to have a neutral, like a gray color in there. And usually my gray is also very light. So even sometimes I have up to one to two grays. So this is why this extension of this video, I would just like to promote good color management in that you have to set up these things at the beginning. Of course, later you may say, eh, I don't like this color style. I prefer maybe something more bright or something more darker or sinister. But if you can, from the beginning, find something, it will also help you with other design in your website. It will also help you to make sure that your website is harmonious from the very beginning. So I am a big supporter of good color management. That's my background. So I apologize if this was an extension that could seem very, very boring. There's more, you know, we can wax lyrical over color management for hours and hours and days to come. I'm going to give the links for these few websites that I've mentioned here um, in the comments section or in the description section below. And yes, I hope that you have found the video useful. Again, um, I, I believe that within a month or two, especially with the release of Breezy Pro, things will be changing constantly. So, you know, even for me, I would like to have to see a default or a reset button here. I would like to have seen that I can have more than one color palette that I can choose from. These are things that I, I probably still would like to see in future editions of Brizzy. So this video is going to have a very short lifespan, I think maybe one month if I'm lucky or two, and then we'll have some new features out already. Let's go FIFA!